Jeff, um, I watched the movie, loved it. It was absolutely fantastic. I remember myself playing the game when I was a teenager in the 90s. And um, I wonder how do you make it relatable to all the generations of, fan of fans? Uh, I mean, I think for a start, you just try to imbue it with as much uh, emotion, heart uh, as you can. And I think Sonic, just as a character, like he, he's just so relatable. I mean, he's a he's a teenager. He's a, he's a kid with a great imagination who loves to play. And I think those are things that are very universal, and, and every, everyone can sort of relate to. You turned him into proper character because in the game he's just a blue hedgehog, basically. Uh, how did you develop the character and the backstory? Did people from Sega help you at all? I mean, it was definitely a team effort. I think uh, one of the r most important moments for me, just as a filmmaker, was the casting and bringing Ben Schwartz in. And I think we know Ben is such a funny guy. He wasn't going to have any trouble bringing humor to the role. Um, but he's a great actor. He has just such great instincts. And, and we really did want a sort of a, a very fully dimensional Sonic for this movie because uh, it just uh, it was just so important for the audience to connect with him in an emotional way. And so just working uh, through ideas with Ben, um, our writers, Josh and Pat, were always had great pitches. And we're just always looking for those little opportunities to just give Sonic a little bit more texture and dimension. He felt to me almost like a teenager who grew up in the 90s. <laughs> he had a stereo, he had like uh -huh. all the things he's got in his cave. They sort of from that era. So how old is he really? Uh, you know, if I, I, if I probably would say maybe 13, 13 or 14. Right. I mean, the reason for all his, his, his stuff in his cave to be a little dated, I mean, I definitely, I think it would be a little strange if he had an iPad and, and all this stuff that looked like he was just stealing from people. Like if it was all secondhand, <laughs> ah, right. it's a little more charming. It's like he doesn't have anything new. He's kind of living uh, with all this secondhand stuff that nobody wants. I just think it makes his situation a little bit more charming right. as opposed to just being a kleptomaniac that's just yeah. stealing stuff out of people's hands, <laughs> which might not be as charming. Um, so yeah, that, that was kind of the reasoning for the uh, having like an old boombox in there. And, and old and shoes which he worn down to. Exactly. To exactly that he still even though it's all old and, and and secondhand and discarded it's it's still it's treasure to him i mean he's just so enamored with it all <laughs> and uh watching jim carrey um acting it's i couldn't imagine anyone except for him in this role but i wonder was it reason for him or did he turn in in that into his own role well, I mean, Jim just brought so much to this character. I mean, I, I remember my first meeting with him and sort of pitching him on the movie and on, on, on Robotnik, and and I mean, he just it just sparked so many ideas from him on how to really to do the same thing for Sonic because it didn't do any good. If Sonic was was dimensional and Robotnik wasn't, then then, that, then we have a problem. So like, Jim just really had some great ideas about backstory and it just ways to make Robotnik a fully formed character t t so that the, the two of them would just form this really iconic uh, hero and villain. There was some backlash after the first trailer mm -hmm. and you went back to redesign Sonic, um, which worked. And um, I wonder, was it the same thing about Dr. Robotnik? Because he looks different to the game. So how did you come up with the way Jim Carrey's character looks? Uh, I think just the idea of, uh, since this is an origin movie for both characters, for both Sonic uh, and Robotnik, that, that maybe there, there's an opportunity to grow Robotnik into that character a little bit. We don't have to start out with him right at the first minute, but, mm -hmm. but just do a little bit of development. And, and if we're so fortunate to, to, to do more films, there's, there's more room for growth there. So, I mean, it was definitely something we were aware of and, and certainly didn't want the fans to think that, that we didn't understand the source material or know the, the look of robotic in the games. And we were certainly uh, very respectful of all that. Um, but just uh, wanting to, to, yeah, have a little bit more of an evolution of the character rather than just than just having it right, right from the start. And uh, I wonder, are there thoughts about a sequel? <laughs> oh, I mean, nothing would make me happier, believe me. And, 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 and in fact, Jim and I have already uh, been bad around ideas and, and, and the writers and, and, and everyone. So, I mean, right now we're just fingers crossed uh, for, for, for February. And, but we're so happy with the film we made. We think fans are just really going to love it. And yeah, uh, fingers crossed we'll, we'll get to do more. I'm sure they will. And thanks so much. Oh, thanks for your kind of you to say. Yeah.